Praise God. Praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Praise God. I know that I am actually, um, I'm not going to say late on getting on because I told you guys that I would, you know, I got a lot going on, but I'm always going to be faithful to the calls. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him glory. I have a quick message for thus said the Lord. And, um, Basically, I'm going to go ahead and do this thing how he wants me to do it. Praise God. I pray that you're having a blessed night. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I have some very key points. I pray that you, you know, we are still in the fast. Today is the 16th day. But more so, when you're listening, I need you to really listen because one thing I have not done is got on here just to talk. <laughs> I got on here because I want to be heard or whatever the case may be. What I always want to do is do what God want me to do. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be very transparent. When I fast, I, I tell you, it just puts everything back in perspective. I mean, God makes you examine yourself. God, you know, like we always look at other people, especially if you have gifts. Yes, we do. You know, a lot of people don't understand, but <laughs> we judge, trust me. You know, I think the enemy came in the church and said, thou shalt not judge so people can actually um, be comfortable with sin. Let's just put it how it is. And yet we all know that we're not supposed to sin. Let's just be honest about that as well. We all know right. We all know wrong. But getting back to my point is that when we fast, God show you everything, not just about everyone else or what's concerning everyone else, but also what's concerning you most. Those areas that you need to, you know, strengthen a little bit more. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Those areas where you're strong, but you can be stronger. Come on, somebody. Those areas where you're weak, where you need to improve. And that could be every area of your life, emotionally, spiritually, financially, physically. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says a just infant and a just weight. That means a balance. And, you know, I'm very transparent on purpose. You know, I told y'all I've been going up and down, up and down with my weight. And I was like, God, what? is this, you know, and I can honestly tell you, I truly believe this time I'm going to make it a lifestyle because I realized, okay, God, no, I can't, I can't be strong in the Lord in one area and not in that area. So that's something that I'm coming to grips with and I'm transparent on purpose. So tying it in with my message, what God was telling me tonight, he said, Deanna, we all have to stay focused. Let me tell you how real it is. The enemy is after your vision. Because your vision is not something just you see, but it's what you know. Some of you know that God have called you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And this is not an easy walk. But you will have, you do have an enemy. Ain't no will. You will have tests and trials, tribulations, spiritual warfare. I, I'm concerned when people, you know, when you ask them how they're doing and, and they cliche saying, Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm, I understand. Yeah. 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 I ain't never fake, fake it till I make it. I never did like that. Sometimes we just need to be honest and say, look, pray for me. I'm going through something, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm saying that to say the enemy will be after you. If you authentic, you see people that's always parting and having a good time in the Lord. And, and I'm not saying that we don't, but for true, real Christians, true, authentic people, we are attacked all the time and that's just the way it is because guess what the enemy is on his job y'all can say what y'all want all you gotta do is turn on the tv go to walmart i say that for a reason or just just be walking around you can you remember 20 years ago and and if you're a little older or younger if you're younger you don't understand but you've seen it when we were a little younger, we used to, could, I mean, leave the door open when I was a little girl. I'm talking about the front door. Nobody would bother you. Every now and then they had somebody playing crazy. But the old people, they packed these days. You know, they packed. Let's just be real. But they didn't hurt nobody unless you tried to um, mess with their family. These days, people just pack in and trying to hurt people just because they have a gun. So I'm going somewhere with all this. Times have changed, meaning that people have changed. You cannot even go in the public without watching your surroundings these days. I'm going somewhere because it all ties in. That's what I'm talking about. The enemy is always after you, always trying to steal, kill, and destroy from your peace to your pocketbook. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. To your anointing. He's always looking for a way in. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And we're not glorifying him. I'm trying to tell you tonight that God said you got to stay focused. You got to be so focused.
focus tunnel vision. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, let me read something to you that God told me. And some of you are very, very familiar with this scripture. It's in Hosea. And it says, 4, 6, it says, my people are destroyed, are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I will also reject thee that thou should be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. You got to understand what this is really talking about. It's not just talking about just his people. He's talking about his priests. Let me read it again slowly because I, I need you to understand why people are getting exposed. I need you to understand what's happening into the clergy of the church. I'm going to read it again. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. Notice what he's saying. Because thou have been disobedient, re rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. Just like King Saul, that thou should be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I will also forget thy children. Do you understand why Jonathan died? Oh, come on, somebody. I'm about to preach and teach up in here. Saul killed Jonathan in a way because you hear what the scripture says. He said, I will also forget thy children. Now, he didn't forget Jonathan's son, David. And we can go on and on if you know scripture. So I'm saying that. People are depending on you, your children, your seed. Come on, somebody, your generation. Y'all ain't ready for me. A legacy. It ain't about just you being obedient. It's your whole family. Let me tell you something. When I truly got saved, there were some things that God told me that I didn't understand. Oh, come on, somebody. And I'm going to be very transparent. Like I always say, God said, Dan, you're going to have to stand in the gap for people that don't even like you. Y'all ain't ready for me. He said, you're going to have to stand in the gap for people that want to kill you. Y'all ain't ready for me tonight. Hallelujah to his name. I couldn't understand that. Somebody, sometimes I just had to say, God, God, can I think about things a couple of days? Cause this is some deep stuff. I mean, when God tell you something, sometimes you got to admit if you really real, it blows your mind. And, and to be honest with you, you can't conceive it. Cause it's like, well, wait a minute. Why do I have to do this? And then he, he'll put that thing on you. So cold. Well, Jesus Christ, Christ did it first. Come on somebody. And it's the truth because he who yet had no sin died for all of us. So then you can't even say nothing when God tell you something that's pertain pertaining to your spirit your anointing and your calling. And I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going to tell y'all something that God told me. One day God told me, he said, Deanna, you're going to be the iron pillar for your family. And I get, didn't understand, but some things, and I'm teaching y'all keys to the kingdom right now. There are some things that you can never tell nobody. And it's a reason because when the time and the presence come and there's a man or woman of God, that, that secret word, somebody going to blur it out. And here's what happened. God had, and I had never uttered it to another human being. So I went to this conference in Oakland, right? And the man, I have to be honest with you, wasn't a lot of people there. So, you know, I kind of like was like, oh man, why did I come here? And, but yet I didn't know what God had in store for me. And I never forget that man said, get up young lady. And I'm looking all like, man, what, what, come on now, you know, cause I, I perceived him just to be a normal person. You know how we do because a person don't have a, cr a crowded church and they have a little star front. That's how a lot of people do think them people ain't got power. Huh? I learned my lesson. You, you better learn yours. You never know. Who God going to put that word in their mouth. So you have to be careful about dismissing people. I don't know who this phone here. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So when I stood up, he said, God said, you're going to be an iron pillar. You guys, the power of God hit me so hard. I fell to the floor and all I could do is cry. And I, I don't even know the man name today, but I remember him saying, you're going to have two ministries. You're going to have a singing ministry and you're going to preach. He said, and you're going to go through some stuff. And I mean, that man was real. That man was real, you guys. And I'm saying this to say, you got to stay focused. You got to remember what God told you in the secret place. Hallelujah to his name. You got to remember. I know it hurts. I know you go through some stuff. I know people mistreat you. I know sometimes you want to give up. I know sometimes you feel discouraged. I know sometimes the money ain't right. I know sometimes the friends ain't right. I know sometimes you get a little tight. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying up in here. But you got to stay focused. And whatever it takes within the realms of right, read your Bible fast. If you got to spend time with God, let me tell you something. Life got everybody busy chasing, chasing, chasing. I'm going to say something to you and it's going to sound bad, but it's real. I heard Eric Thomas said he's a motivational speaker. What now? Hold on. I don't listen to every motivational speaker. As a matter of fact, I just take a little bit what they say, because remember, they're a motivational speaker, meaning that they just try to make you feel good. But there was one thing that got my attention the other day and I was just strolling. And he actually, you know, if you 
kind of like stroll and stop it or say something. And that's what happened. But it was intricate because I listened to it again. He said, broke people chase money. That was real, you guys. That was real. You got people working two, three, four jobs. God didn't tell you to do that. Come on, somebody. I know you feel like you got to because you you, you want to live like the Joneses and everybody else. God did not tell you to do that. But I'm going to tell you something. He said, but if you master your craft, that's what, let me tell you something. That's what I've been doing. Yes, I can preach and I can teach and I'm going to be transparent on here because y'all already know. If you follow me, you already know what I'm getting ready to say. There were so many times I couldn't understand. I said, God, I know I'm real. Why is there lack in my life? I said, I'm not lazy. What's going on? And he said, there's something inside that I want you to do. And then I thought about it. I said, God, everybody say that I have, you know, blessed hands to cook. And then that's when I started it. I mean, they've been saying it for 20 years, just to be honest with you, you guys. And I was like, okay. And so when I really started saying, okay, God, if this is the way that you want me to do this, then that's what I'm going to do it. Now, hold on. The reason why it was so much lack and confusion, and I'm just going to be transparent because I was trying to do it just, okay, I, I got to do it through ministry. I got to do it through ministry. And God was telling me that every part of your life is ministry. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because y'all do know when I'm cooking, y'all do know I meet people that are saved. And if they're not saved, y'all already know I'm going to give them a word. I have fed the homeless when I cook. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. So it ain't just about Chef Didi. I'm still Apostle Deanna all the way. Chef Didi is, is one of my my crafts. Come on, somebody. I'm saying something to you tonight, but I'm still focused that I'm an apostle first. Come on, somebody. I'm telling y'all something, but whatever and however God wants to use me, then let God be God. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? Stay focused. You know what God told you to do? Stay focused, stay focused. Cause people have you doing everything else, but what God told you to do, even your pastor. Yeah, I'm saying it because most of you will listen to man before you listen to God. Now hold on. Cause I'm not telling anybody to disrespect their pastor, their I am saying this, they're supposed to be subject to God. Come on, somebody. And if they're not subject to God, come on, somebody. And you should be subject to God first. Most people that's in church right now are listening to men and women more than God. That's why the body of Christ is in trouble. You can't do that. I'm not saying don't respect them. Yes, because there are some mentors and people that I respect. I respect them, but I'm going to tell you right now, everything that they tell me, I'm going back to God and ask God if it's true. Y'all ain't ready for me. I'm going back to God and ask God if that's what he said and that's what he wants me to do. And that's what you're supposed to do. That's protocol. So what am I saying? Be encouraged. Be encouraged. And, and if you real... I know you're going through something because every true person is going through it. But God told me to tell you, it's the sifting of the weak time. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all knew it was coming. God is sifting out who's real and who's not. Because guess what? If they're just doing it for money and honey and funny, don't act like y'all don't know what I'm saying without saying it. They're going to break anyway. They're going to break and be exposed. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But if you authentic with tears in your eyes, with fears, not understanding. Oh, God, how am I going to do this? What am I going to do, God? I don't understand. You're going to keep on and you would not compromise with tears in your eyes. When people talking about you, when they leave you, when they stay, you're going to still say, God, I serve you. God, I love you. God, I keep you. God, keep me. Hallelujah to his name. You got to stay strong. You got to stay strong. And sometimes I'm real with you. You might have to stay up all night and pray. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me because we have a church that I'm, I'm just being real with you. We have a weak church. They don't want to labor. They don't even want to labor for themselves. There are sometimes you're going to have to go to that flow, man of God. You're going to have to go to that flow, woman of God. And you're going to have to pray until you get an answer. Oh, hallelujah to his name. You're going to have to fast till you get an answer. You're going to have to pray till you get an answer. Y'all ain't ready for me. You're going to have to listen till you get an answer. Hallelujah to his name. So I'm not going to keep you much tonight. I just wanted to get on here because I was, you know, I have an event tomorrow. So I was preparing myself, you know, um, one thing about it, I do everything in a spirit of excellence. You know, that's another thing God was saying. If you're going to do anything, do it with excellence. The Bible says be fervent in business and that's business, this ministry. That's two different things. Uh, let me clarify that. So God bless you. God keep you. I pray that you be strong in the Lord. I pray that everybody that's under my voice, because if you on this live tonight, listening to Apostle Deanna Dixon, one thing I know you real, 
You real, oh, you might have a witch or a warlock or two. Let's be real. Come on, because they're always listening too. But they're going to mess around and get saved one day too, playing around with me. I promise you that. Oh, <laughs> you think it's a game? Don't, don't stop me. <laughs> so God bless y'all. God keep you. Be strong. Be encouraged. And I love you through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Roll out soldiers, for that is who we are. God bless.